The scientific community has recently confirmed that EBV infection is a prerequisite to developing MS. In today's video, I'm going to share with you some really intriguing research which helps us better understand how that's possible. Exactly what is EBV doing to lead to multiple sclerosis? Don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. Today's video centers around what causes multiple sclerosis. But today's video is really exciting because I'm going to share with you some recently published scientific literature. It takes the recent knowledge that EBV is probably a prerequisite to developing MS and takes it a step further, sharing with us a possible mechanism of how exactly that occurs. I'm pretty excited to share with you, so let's jump in. The paper that we'll be discussing today is entitled Cross-Reactive EBNA1 Immunity Targets Alpha Crystalline B and is associated with multiple sclerosis. The first author is an Olivia Thomas, and this article was published in Science Advances just four days ago, May 17th of this year. So let's set the stage. We know that multiple sclerosis is an inflammatory disease of the central nervous system, or brain and spinal cord. We call it an autoimmune condition appropriately because our own immune system is inappropriately attacking our brain and spinal cord, causing lesions and MS damage. We have known for some time that there is an association with MS in EBV or mono. And very recently, there was an awesome study done which demonstrated in a giant population that it appears that contracting EBV, getting mononucleosis infection may be in fact, a prerequisite to developing MS. In other words, if you don't have EBV, you can't go on to have MS. But until recently, we haven't really understood why. There's a paper that was published four days ago, and they looked at this relationship, and they found what might be a connection. The crux of this paper, at a very high level, they're hypothesizing uh, molecular mimicry. So what is molecular mimicry? It's when the immune system identifies a bad guy, builds an arsenal against it, and unfortunately that arsenal can also identify part of you as the same foreign invader. So to be a little bit more specific, the researchers looked at a protein which is found on the Epstein-Barr virus called EBNA1. And when you contract mono, the immune system can identify that protein and it can build an arsenal. It can build antibodies and T cells, which can identify EBNA1. Here's where it gets unfortunately interesting. We have a protein in our central nervous system, which is called alpha crystalline B, C-R-Y-A-B. And I didn't make up any of these names, by the way. And it looks like the antibodies and T cells that we develop to fight off mono by targeting the protein EBNA1 by accident can also bind to the alpha crystalline B molecule, the protein that we have. In this molecular mimicry or cross reactivity, we are by accident building an arsenal which now can target parts of ourselves, our brain and spinal cord. So what did these really cool researchers do? Real quick before we go on, do me a solid favor. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Those two actions teach the YouTube algorithm that you dig this content and help push it out so more people can benefit. Thank you. They collected blood from 713 people with MS and 722 people who were controls. They didn't have MS. And then they put their blood samples on what's called a peptide library. A peptide library is something you do in a laboratory. It's imagine like a gel and inside the gel are proteins that you want to study. So when you put the blood on top, you can see whether or not the antibodies in the blood react to the protein. And when they did that, what they saw was really striking. If the blood sample was able to react to, it had antibodies that reacted to the self protein that I talked about, the CRYAB protein, then that person was twice as likely to be an MS patient. So it was kind of correlating positivity of that to having MS. But wait, it gets even weirder. If the blood sample was able to react to um, both the CRYAB protein 
and it was also able to bind to the EBNA1 protein. Remember, that's the one that's on the Epstein-Barr virus. It increased the likelihood that that person had MS times nine, nine times higher. That's absolutely remarkable. That's a very, very high risk. Next, the researchers did something called blocking experiments, which were able to demonstrate antibody cross-reactivity between the EBNA1 and the CRBA1 parts of the protein. In other words, one antibody that could bind to one could also bind to the other. It was cross-reactive. Now this speaks to that molecular mimicry that I mentioned earlier. So the idea here is you get mono, you get EBV, and your immune system can identify and make a antibody against EBNA1, and this experiment demonstrates that that same antibody can probably also bind to and interact with your own protein, the CRYAB protein. But wait, that's not all. They also looked at a group of people with multiple sclerosis that were receiving Tysabri as their treatment. And when they looked at their T cells, they found that the CD4 positive T cells, the helper T cells, were increased targeting both CRYAB and targeting EBNA1. This is important because it's telling us that not just the B cells, which make antibodies, can participate in this cross-reactivity, but there's also some molecular mimicry probably that you're seeing with T cells as well. So what does all this mean? This study provides really strong evidence that there are antibody cross-reactivity, molecular mimicry, between a protein that we see in EBV and one of our own proteins in our central nervous system. And then it also shows that there's probably cross-reactivity with helper T cells. In total, this study really demonstrates the role of EBV in its impact on the adaptive immune system, probably causing or leading to the development of MS. As always, thank you for learning about MS with me. The most amazing thing you could do to help this channel grow is to watch another video. So if you wanna up your game, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or live stream, or the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.